In this video, I will show you how to do conformance checking in a promoter. Conformance checking means to verify that a given business process follows certain prescribed behavior. This prescribed behavior can be captured, for example, by means of rules, which we sometimes call compliance rules. I am going to show you uh, some examples of how to do conformance checking in the context of a process for treatment of patients in an emergency room, specifically patients who uh, suffer from a type of infection known as sepsis. This process map I am showing you it is derived from an event log of a process that starts when a patient arrives when the emergency room. At that point in time, the patients are registered. They then have to be classified to be sent to different parts of the hospital. This is called emergency room triage. After emergency room triage, those patients who suffer from sepsis are normally undergo an, a, another step called emergency room sepsis triage. Not necessarily all of them, but the vast majority of them. After sepsis triage, they undergo a number of tests and treatments and at some point in time they are discharged or released and unfortunately some of them do return to emergency room at a later time. One of the basic rules that we will expect that every case in this process fulfills is that every patient should go once through emergency room registration and once through emergency room triage. To verify that every case goes once through certain activities, one very simple way of doing it is by using the visualization settings, particularly the frequency settings, and selecting the minimum uh, aggregation function. In this way, the process map displays to me what is the minimum number of times that each activity occurs in any given case of the process. Here, it turns out that the minimum number of times that I observe emergency room registration in a case of this process is once, which is what I expected. And the minimum number of times that I observe ER triage is once. Now, let me do the reverse checking. Let me check if it sometimes happens that the emergency room registration or the emergency room triage or the sepsis triage, for that matter, occur more than once. For that, I will select the maximum aggregation function. This tells me now that the maximum number of times that ER registration occurs is once, as I expected. But the maximum number of times that emergency room triage occurs is twice. In other words, there are cases where emergency room triage is occurring twice, which is not something we expected. It's not part of the prescribed behavior. To investigate this further, I can filter this event log in order to retain those cases where ER triage occurs twice. For this, I will apply a filter by calling the filtering plugin. And I will create a filter which will be a rework and repetition filter. And I'm going to select those cases where ER triage occurs greater than or equal, in this, in this case equal, to twice. I apply this filter and now I am seeing in, in the process map corresponding to those cases where ER triage occurs twice. I can then go to the case explorer and see that there are three such cases and I can see the case IDs and I could download these cases into uh, a CSV file which I can visualize using my favorite spreadsheet software and invest in order to investigate these cases further one by one. Another conformance checking rule that is relevant in this setting is that after the emergency room triage, if the emergency room sepsis triage occurs, it should occur at most two hours after the ER triage. So I'm going to try to retrieve 
those cases where the time that pass between ER triage and ER sepsis triage is greater than two hours. For that, I will apply again a filter. I will delete the filter that I previously had and I will create a new filter, which this time will be a pass filter. I want to specifically select those cases where ER triage occurs, later ER sepsis triage occurs, I will say eventually ER triage occurs, and the time interval between the occurrence of ER triage and ER sepsis triage is greater than two hours. I will apply this filter and I can see already here on the left hand side of the filtering interface that there are 26 cases out of 1100 cases in this event log where this condition is fulfilled, which means my compliance rule is being violated. I can then apply this filter and I can now see the process map of those cases where this condition has been violated. Again, I can go to the cases perspective and observe uh, in the, those 26 cases in which this has occurred. Also, if I select one of these cases here, I can see the specific pathways through which this case happened. So every case has a different pathway and I can then try to investigate further why did the process happen in this particular way and why was this compliance rule violated. There Until now, I had shown to you how to uh, verify that certain compliance rules are being fulfilled on, and then to retrieve those cases where they are not being fulfilled. In addition to verifying compliance rules, it is also useful in many cases to try to discover deviations with respect to the prescriptive behavior by exploring infrequent or potentially anomalous behavior. Normally, when a promore filters the arcs in the process map, it first removes the least frequent arcs and therefore it leaves the most frequent arcs. But if I click on the icon invert ordering in the abstraction settings, a promoter will just do exactly the opposite. It will remove the most frequent arcs and therefore it will leave me the least frequent arcs, in other case, the rare and potentially anomalous behavior. I will put the abstraction slider to the minimum possible and I can now observe what is the behavior that is very rare. And one of the things I observe here is that there is a, one case where after releasing the patient, I do the leukocyte test, whereas this is not normal. Normally, I should do my test before releasing the patient and not the other way around. By control right clicking on this rare arc, I can filter the event log in order to retain only those cases where this happened, meaning only these cases where after a release I did a leukocytes. And I can retrieve in the case explorer the case identifier of the case which has happened and I can see what was the pathway that was taken in this particular case. Another um, rule that often occurs particularly in financial processes is the so-called four eyes principle. The four eyes principle tells me that a given financial document, such as an invoice, should be created by a different person than the one who approves it in order to have more oversight, so that there are four eyes on top of that invoice before that invoice is paid. To illustrate that, I will take an example of a, a process that involves a payment. In this process, at some point in time, an invoice or a credit note is being created. And later, this, the, the payment of this invoice is being approved. And I will normally want it that the invoice and the payment activities are performed by different employees. Sometimes, however, this compliance rule is being violated. So uh, in order to, to determine if that is the case and to retrieve the cases where that happens, I can apply a filter 
in on top of this event log of this financial process and i can specifically create a a, a path filter that retains those cases where invoice credit note happened which was then eventually followed by payment and i will require that the same user name did both activities the invoice and the payment i apply this filter and bingo i find that there are 16 cases out of almost 35,000 cases where the, the four ice principle was violated uh, after applying this filter i will see the process map which i will push to 100 percent with those cases where it happened indeed invoice credit note is followed in these cases by payment and i can then using the case explorer retrieve the specific case ids where it happened i can also use the perspective switching capability in a promore move from the activity perspective to the username perspective in order to see which users were involved in those cases where this compliance rule was violated and what i can observe is that is user number 43 who 16 times performed two tasks in this process the invoice and the payment and this concludes my demonstration of how to perform conformance checking particularly verification of compliance rules using Appromore.